If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole is. the truth. This map was published or copyrighted in November of 1920 in Boston, Massachusetts by Professor John G. Abizaid. Uh, Abizaid, Abizaid. Not sure how you pronounce it, but he in, he titled this map the new correct map of the flat surface stationary Earth. Now I've been collecting maps for I guess the past eighteen to twenty four months, somewhere around there. Um, there there's many different types of map. This is one of my favorite maps just because of the simplicity of the map. It's obviously not meant to show land masses and water, you know, masses of water. It's uh, literally just a map of the zones basically of the temperature differences which in my opinion is one of the better proofs that the earth is not a globe now there's hundreds maybe even thousands of proofs that the earth is not a globe uh so but this map is it, the intent of it is basically to break it down into five different zones now this is the front of the map as you see there are five different zones and there's a descriptive key to go along with this map that was actually on the back side of the map when it was originally published now a lot of times when you buy these offline it will be both back and front will be on the front like the one I have hanging on my wall now this right here is Mr. John G. Abizade as you see interesting placement of the hand here that is for a different video at a different time. But anyway, there he is, John G. Abizade. And um, this is the back of his map, as you see. Got another picture of him up here. Here's a descriptive key I was talking about, and it's got all this writing over here. Now, he did write a book to go along with this map, as you see here. Um, now, the book's about 30, 35 pages long. Very short book, but... It's called The Enlightenment of the World. And as you see here, the very bottom, it says, This book contains proof that the Earth is flat and stationary, while the sun, moon, and stars are in constant motion. Also, letters showing the testimony of Scripture on the subject. The book is published in 1914. At least the second edition was in 1914. Um, and the key... If we look at the key on the map here, um, as you see here, let's go back to the, uh, so the oh, excuse me, the back of the map here. You see there's a descriptive key right here, and I've actually got this blown up right here. So what that says is right here on, on the, remember this was normally on the back of the map. Uh, this is the true map of the flat stationary earth by Syrian American professor published a map to reveal the true posture of the earth first to help the people in recognition of, this, uh, of the fact that the earth is flat and does not move second so that the young people in schools and in higher positions may have the benefit of the truth now as I was reading these things uh, preparing for this video where it says the, so the, the young people in schools and higher positions might have the benefit of the truth so that right there tells me that, that even back when this map was published and copyrighted and he probably wrote this even before i'm sure 1920 but the map was published and copyrighted in 1920 there was a battle going on at that time just like there is now for young children's minds and and, and these children in schools that there's a battle going on to win their mind over and to get them off of what creation is because creation is so important for many reasons but it's so important because it connects us to who we are and who made us. So they, they want to get you off 
of what creation is and they want to get you on their idea of what they have created and not what the creator has created so it's it's interesting that the battle has been going on this long and he noted this in here that first saying hey the earth is flat does not move it's stationary and second so that young people in schools and in higher positions will have the benefit of this truth next paragraph he just talks about how he wrote a book on it we already showed you that the enlightenment of the world and he said the theory of the round and floating earth is false and you should not believe in it as long as you yourself can see and feel the earth that the earth is a plain object and is standing still and you will see that the sun moon, and the stars are daily in motion now this again goes to your god-given common sense right or your senses period that every your everyday life all you ever do is experience a, a non-rotating you know, stationary object that you're standing on your that you're living on but just like we mentioned earlier they want to get you off of that and get you away from the true creation and the true creator so it says they arrive every day from the east to the west now the sunlight progresses from the south advancing to the north and returns one year a lot of this stuff is basic stuff um which he says goes on to say that this right here creates your seasons here with spring summer autumn and winter but here's kind of where the map really lies is where he's dividing this map the surface of the earth using the map into five different zones and we'll go over those zones as we talk about them so the the first one up here is the north center which is dark for six months and is lighted for six months and he goes on to say sometimes in the future there will be some explorer who will cross it second he goes to the north temperate zone is the most desirable to live in probably should be pulling this um, map up as we're um, talking about it maybe uh, let's see so that that first where the north center which is dark for six months and light as you see here is right here that black circle in the middle is your north center there then we went over the second one here where it talks um let's see where we at is the north temperate zone is the most desirable to live in the most industrious and the most powerful nations inhabit this zone and that would be this white ring right around the black inner circle which would basically be like the northern hemisphere hemisphere however you want to say it. we've all been indoctrinated with those terms not really a hemisphere hemisphere but a but you get the you get the, you get the drift let's go back to the key here we go to the third which is the torrid zone or the tropics and it's hot dailies the sun is over it always the sun's body does not move out of the zone to a very great extent let's go back to this this is this little reddish pinkish colored area here which is where your equator is it's going to have the hotter temperatures because that's where your it moves in between the tropics right so the sun's going to be in that zone all year round so there's where you're going to have your more tropical temperatures and and, and your you know your higher uh, temps yearly makes perfect sense right so that was the third zone there then we go to the fourth zone which is the south temperate zone has about the same climate as the north temperate zone uh and, and this is this area. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Let's go back, down, back here. That's this wider, this uh, wider, this outer white ring here. Going to be is, what he's saying is 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 the temperature zone or the temperature here in this outer white zone. It's going to be very similar to the inner white zone because of the sun, the way it moves between the tropics, it migrates between the tropics. You're going to have uh, close to similar temperatures which is what you should expect on a um, flat uh, stationary earth when we get to the fifth zone here is right here the south circle is dark and icy like the north center but no one can ever cross the circle as it is the edge of the earth and is dangerous to life the south circle is the largest of the five zones also, the nights are longer. <clears throat> excuse me. When the sun is moving near the south circle, 
But when the sun moves near the north center, the night is about eight hours in the north temperate zone, and the north center is lighted for six months. Let's go back to this map here. So here's where your huge discrepancy is, is this outer black circle here. Now, on a globe, that would make no sense. This outer ring here should have similar temperatures, similar vegetation. It should have similar wildlife as this northern inner ring here. Because if we're on a globe, this outer ring here should be the same size as this northern ring here, or close to it which is means it's getting equal sunlight all year around. So you should have similar land masses, ice masses, whatever you want to say, similar temperatures, similar, similar vegetation, similar wildlife. But the huge discrepancy here will show you that the Earth cannot be a globe. Because if this were the case, then you would have those similar temperate zones in between the north and the south. South circle's huge. The temperatures are not even close. They're way different between the two. It goes on to say in his last sentence here, this is a proof that the earth is not like the south in shape, neither the south like the north. Last paragraph here in his descriptive key if the earth was round, as some people imagine, imagine how he says imagine. I mean, not imagine how he says imagine. Think about how he says imagine, because you have to imagine it. Just like Albert Einstein says, it's more important to imagine things. The power of imagination is more important than the power of science, or however you word it. I can't remember exactly. The shape of the North Pole and the South Pole would be the exact, exactly the same. The North Pole and also the South Pole would have six months of darkness and six months of light. Also, the sun takes more time to move around from the east to west near the south circle. Take a journey around the south circle and another around the north center. You will find it much shorter different dif distance around the north center. Excuse me. Which proves that the north and the south are not the same shape as people claim. Now, we're not allowed to go down that far to maybe prove some of these things, but... You can tell just by the temperature differences when um, you research different areas, which I have, and I'll make a video on that as well. After you have studied the truth of my work, as John G. Abizade says, you will know I am right. If anyone desires more explanation, I will be pleased to give it. So hopefully you can appreciate this map as much as I do, as it's very simple. I like the descriptive key that goes along that goes along with it, that he breaks it down into one, two, three, four, five zones, and he breaks them down really well and offers that, hey, this is a proof that the north is not like the south in shape, neither the south like the north, which would tell you um, that what they show you that you live on is not correct. But um, let's go do the video tonight. Um, I really appreciate you listening, and uh, hopefully we could come up with some more content. I, I'm, I've made an Antarctica video about a travel agency that I posted about a month ago. Um, very interesting. If you'll go back and look at that, it's about 10 minutes long. So I call a travel agency and inquire about the 24-hour sun in the Arctic and the 24-hour sun in the Antarctic. Uh, very interesting what he has to say. I'm going to make another video coming up soon about temperature differences between the north and the south uh quote unquote poles and um very interesting there as well i've already collected some of the or really the data stamp made the video yet so anyway that's it i really appreciate y'all listening to me and i'll catch you on the next one pardon my folly but hear me if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole is. You want I want the truth! You can't handle the truth!